Vasudev Pandey was the fifth Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, serving between 1995 and 2001. The longest serving leader of the opposition, he is best known for representing the working class and for being at the forefront of the struggle for unity. The great emotional satisfaction you get when you do something and you know you have made people happy. You do something to make people happy. Emotional satisfaction. I got enormous emotion, emotional satisfaction from pulling sugar. Feel an excruciating quality. Lift them up. Born on May 25, 1933, in St. Julian Village, South Trinidad, Vasudev Pandey came from a peasant farming background. His personal journey was one of struggle from an early age. Some time in my life, and I can't remember yeah. when, um, I think it, it, it was since when I had to clean the mule pen and the, the fields and the grime and so on. Um, and I would, I would think, I'd be thinking. And uh, it dawned on me sometime early in my life that the way out of this poverty was education. Education was the answer. And um, I, I didn't know at that time uh, how, how and when and why this education would come. Um, and during that time, I lived like every other uh, child in the village, going to school, taking care of the animals, the goats and the cows and so on and so forth, helping appearances on weekends and after school. Um, and then something happened, and this is what my uncle, my father's uncle, a man by the name of J. H. Dubey, um, who was a clerk to the solicitor's firm of Hobson's, uh, which, which was on the San Fernando Promenade, on the corner there, and um, uh, he was clerk there, but my father's uncle, Mr. Dubey, and he um, asked my father to send me to, to, to San Fernando to stay with him, and he sent me to Presentation College, and that's how I happened to have got a secondary education. By age 11, after attending primary school, the young Bastia was given the opportunity to go to secondary school. By 1951, he had earned a senior Cambridge certificate, but his future was uncertain. What happened was that I couldn't get a job, and I got a job as a cane wear. Uh, a cane wear weighing canes at the Williamsville Estate. Uh, and I worked there for one crop season, and that was a crop season, I think, must have been of 1951 or thereabouts. And uh, after that, I got a job as a teacher in one of the Aria Protinity Sabah schools. It was the Siram Memorial Vedic School, and um, I taught there for a while. Incidentally, I used to ride a motorcycle in those days. I have broken finger to prove it as well. Um, uh, and while teaching there, uh, I took this civil service entrance exams. And um, I passed that and uh, got a job as a second class clerk at the San Fernando Magistracy. And I became the note taker. In those days, we'd uh, take the notes uh, of the witnesses, right, the long hand, and uh, I became a note taker uh, in the courts and actually <coughs> took notes with Mr. Hassanandi, who, who was a magistrate at the time, who later became a judge and the president of the country. Uh, I took um, notes with Errol Rupner Ryan, who became the Solicitor General, uh, took notes with a lot, a lot of magistrates. And um, while doing all of that, I, I remember another thing. When I became a teacher, I, I, I got $84 a month. And um, when I started working in the public service, I got 100 and, 
four dollars a month and it is upon that income that um, I was able not only to live and help my parents and so on but I was able to save up uh, five hundred dollars over a long period of time by that time it was 1957 and I decided that I was going to England to study law uh, my parents were so poor they, they couldn't afford to uh, give me any money they couldn't, they couldn't, have, couldn't afford to sustain me at, uh, at school with little money but much determination he set out on a long journey to England. I went to London by the cheapest method which was available and that is uh, I went by a cargo boat and an Italian cargo boat an Italian cargo boat that went from Port Spain and um, went, went to Tenerife and, and all those places ended up in Geneva and um, from Geneva uh, um, took Cali by train and then to Southampton by ferry and then to train by London. Um, it took 14 days to, to, to reach London. And I remember one, 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 one thing uh, which reminds me somewhat of the poverty is uh, when my mother came to me and I don't know how she found out. She said, son, I understand you're going third class. I said, yeah. She said, why? I said, because there are no fourth class as well. <laughs> Without the means to begin studying, the self-motivated Pandey sought work. I landed in London with a hundred dollars in my pocket, which was 20 pounds in those days. Um, and I had two friends uh, who met me and who were, were living in London. And um, they just put another bed in the in this little room and uh, I stayed with them um, and while there of course I, I began working uh, and I worked with the building industry um, as a laborer. Actually I actually work as an electrician's mate uh, at one time and uh, then having done that for several months I couldn't study because the work at the building sites was too hard. You couldn't work and study in the night at all. I, I eventually got a job um, as a clerk with the London County Council. That enabled me to start to fulfill the dream of becoming a lawyer because I went to London because I wanted to study law. But the dream was not yet within his grasp. I began working at the, the, the London County Council, but, but I needed, I think, £102 in order to deposit with the Lincoln's Inn before I could study law. I didn't have uh, £102. So that um, working at the London County Council, saving as much as I can, I also attended night school. And I attended, but the night school I attended was a drama school. So I attended a drama school at, at evenings and nights um, for two years. Got a diploma in drama, actually. Um, but that, 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 that wasn't the best part. The best part was that I began getting parts on, on British television, BBC, ITV as it was then. Um, Several small parts, several small parts, and uh, eventually, so I, I, I had enough money, 102 pounds to deposit. So I deposited this with the Lincoln's Inn, and couldn't yet begin to study law because I'm doing drama. Uh, when I decided I want, I was going to study drama. I wasn't going to study drama to become an actor. I wanted to study drama to become a good lawyer because I admired the great orators of that day, so Edward Marshall Hall and guys like that, they were tremendous, that was, um, great oratory. And um, I thought that a lot of being a good lawyer 
is being to perform really like a good actor. And that's the reason I went to, to drama school, not to be an actor, to allow to be one for a time. Uh, I never thought that being a uh, good drama school would help me in another profession, <laughs> that's politics. Soon he developed an acting career which funded his legal studies. When I qualified, when I left drama school and I began getting some small parts and so on, um, I began studying um, law. But the big break came in 1961 when I got a part in a play at the West End in London, at the Savoy Theatre. And uh, that play ran for a year. So it meant that um, every night I'd go to the theatre and twice on Wednesdays and Saturdays when we did a matinee as well. And uh, But I was able now. First I was studying, working in the day and studying in the night. And now I began working in the night. So I started studying in the day. And um, the play ran from about January 1961 to about December 1961. And by the time the play had closed, I had finished part one of the bar. Getting closer to fulfilling his dream, Pandey then set an extraordinary goal to pass his final exams in six months. And because I had worked at the theatre, I now had enough money to sustain me for about six months. And I decided that I was going to pass the bar finals in those six months. And um, I decided I wouldn't go to lectures because if I went to lectures, that would take a long period. They have a, a, a way of doing things, you know, a whole semester to do an exam. But in those days, uh, the, the law schools would have exams twice or three times per year in uh, May, June, May, I think, and September and December. So um, I decided I was going to take the May exams. Uh, and uh, I went to a, a, a bookshop in, in Chancery Lane in London called Wiley's. And um, they used to rent the books. And I rented all the law books from the part two of the bar, the finals. And I took them home and I began to read them from cover to cover. And I studied something like 18 hours a day. Um, I eventually sat the, ex the bar exam in May, June, can't remember, and passed. In 1962, Vasudev Pandey had attained his law degree, yet it was surprisingly an anticlimax. After, after I passed the law, I, I, I recall very well, you know, going to the uh, ends of court, looking on the board, seeing my name there, coming out to the ends of court, and feeling what was the difference? I didn't feel educated. Yesterday, I wasn't a lawyer. Today, I'm a lawyer, but I don't feel that I'm educated. So, um, that thirst for education is what was prompting that kind of feeling, I guess. By this time, Pandey had received a grant from the London County Council, so he promptly enrolled in London University. In 1965, he graduated with a BSc in Economics and a minor in Political Science, and was also offered a Commonwealth Postgraduate Scholarship at the Delhi School of Economics. And I decided, well, I had been away for so long, that um, instead of going directly to India, I would come home and see my parents, and then I, I would go back, I, I would go to India. And that coming home changed my life completely. Indeed, beyond reuniting with family, Pandey soon developed a keen interest in the politics of the day. 
But when I came here, I found uh, Stephen Moraj, C.L.R. James, Jack Kelshaw, uh, uh, and, and people like that, engaged in a struggle against the PNM government that was trying to introduce the ISA, the Industrial Stabilization Act, which they regarded as anti-worker. It, I, I think, it, it restricted the right to strike. <coughs> so that um, they were carrying out this struggle on behalf of the workers. After attending a public meeting in Prince's Town and speaking to Stephen Maharaj, Pandey found himself at a crossroad. It was the beginning of his struggle with the working class. He, he said, here we are, engaging in a struggle for the workers, for people like your parents, class of people from whom your parents came, from whom you came, and so on. I went home. But those words began to haunt me. Because uh, he said, why don't you stay here and struggle with us? And I went home and I really could, couldn't rest. Those words began to haunt me. Uh, and I gave up the search. And I joined their struggle. I set up legal practice in San Fernando, um, in Kelsholz building. And I became the lawyer to several unions. The launch of Bastille Pandey's legal career was closely aligned to the trade union movement. I represent them there because I had the knowledge of both law and economics. So I represented about nine unions. I became the, the, the lawyer for nine unions. I was lawyer for the OWTU. Uh, I, I was lawyer, lawyer for the OWTU, the um, Transport and Industrial Workers Union under Joe Young, uh, Francis Meadows, um, Food Allied and Beverages Union. Uh, lots of them. And the trouble is, I couldn't confine myself to being their lawyer. And I began getting involved in their struggles. So when they were striking and marching and this and that, I striking and marching and so on with them. And getting locked up and so on and arrested for all kinds of things. Championing the cause of the unions, Pandey's popularity among the working class catapulted him to becoming a union leader himself. When Badis died in 1972, um, there was a vacuum. And uh, the Secretary of the Trade Union, Rampatap Singh, I think it was his name, yes, Rampatap Singh was his name, he invited me to become president. So they held the elections and so on. Eventually, I became the president of the Sugar Union in 1973. Um, May, May, May 1973, 6th May 1973, I think it was. Uh, and began struggling for the workers.